hello everyone welcome back to another video today i'll be showing how you can install mysql and mysql workbench on ubuntu operating system so without further ado let's get started first we'll open a terminal window and update the repositories so type in sudo apt update and press enter provide your password enter again let me clear it then we'll install the mysql server so type in sudo apt install mysql server press enter enter again so mysql server has been installed now if we type mysql-v we'll see the currently installed mysql version let me clear it by pressing ctrl l then we'll type sudo mysql to get into mysql shell let me clear it again here we can run any sql command let's try show databases press enter and it will show the default pre-configured databases we can also create our own database so let's type in create database student and press enter now if we type show databases again we should be able to see student database as well let me clear it again by pressing ctrl l and we'll exit out of the mysql shell by typing exit next we'll enhance the security of the mysql server so let's type in sudo mysql secure installation and press enter the first option is validate password component so we'll type y and press enter next option is the password length we'll type 2 for strong password and press enter next option is whether we want to remove the anonymous users so we'll type y and press enter next option is whether we want to disallow root login remotely we'll type y and press enter again next option is whether we would like to remove test database and access to it let's go ahead with y as well and press enter finally if we would like to reload privilege tables now so we'll type y and press enter again so everything is done let me clear the window now let's go inside mysql shell by typing sudo mysql now let's have a look at the current user and host by typing select current user press enter as you can see the current user is root and the host is localhost let me clear it again this root user does not have a password yet so we'll set up a password for this root user so let's type in alter user root at localhost identified with mysql native password by let's type in some random characters make sure to include numbers letters and some special characters let me zoom out the window so you can see it in one line since we'll have to remember this password it is better to note it down for now we'll just store it in the text editor
now if we press enter we will see that the password has been created successfully let's exit out now if we type sudo mysql again we will not be able to access the mysql shell in order to access it we will type mysql dash u short for user root then dash p short for password then press enter then type in the password we just created and press enter as you can see now we are in the mysql shell now we'll install mysql workbench so let's head over to a browser window and go to mysql.com in this page we'll click on downloads scroll down and click on mysql community downloads then click on mysql workbench here we'll have to select the operating system so let's open up a terminal window and type lsb release dash d as you can see my current version is ubuntu 24.04.2 lts let me close it and get back to the browser here we'll select ubuntu linux as operating system then my os version is ubuntu linux 24.04 .04, so i'll select that then we'll download the first dev package you can also download the second one which includes debugging symbols on this page we can sign up and log in but we'll do it quickly so let's click on no thanks download now be sure to accept the downloads in case the browser blocks unverified file so the download has been finished let's go to the downloads directory now let's open up a terminal window here to install the downloaded dev package we'll simply type in sudo dpkg dash i and then the name of the dev file in this case i'll type the first few letters and then press the tab to auto complete let me close the other terminal window and press enter type in my password enter again so mysql workbench has been installed let me close the terminal window and the file explorer as well now let's click on the app launcher and find mysql workbench it should open within a few seconds since it is taking some time let's open up a terminal window and type in mysql workbench and press enter as you can see there are some missing dependencies so let's clear the window and type in sudo apt dash dash fix broken install and press enter it should install the required dependencies next we'll type sudo apt install libpros dev and pros bean press enter if everything goes well we should be able to run mysql workbench now so let me close the terminal window and open mysql workbench again as you can see mysql workbench can be accessed now so let's click on the default local instance now it is asking for the root password so let's paste it we can also save password in keychain then click on ok now we are inside mysql workbench here we can see the menu bar on top left and some quick icons as well just below the menu bar there is administration section you can click on them one by one and learn more about them you can check the server status client connections data export server logs and dashboard statistics 
Now let me close the administration dashboard. Here in the query window, we can run any SQL command. Let's type in show databases. And if we click on this lightning icon, the SQL command will be executed immediately. As you can see, it shows the default pre-configured databases. Let me close the result. From here, we can also navigate to the schemas tab. As you can see, the student database we created initially is right there. We can expand it and explore its tables, views and any other functions. We can simply double click it to select it. If we want to create a new database, we can just click on this create a new schema icon. Then we can give it a name. Let's call it customer. Then we can click on apply and it will show the SQL script. Click on apply again and the script will be executed. Let's close it and get back to the schemas tab. Let me close the new schema window as well. Now let's double click the customer database or schema to select it. And then let's click on this create a new table icon. Here we can type the name of the table that we want to create. Let's create an information table. Then we can create some columns. Let's call it ID. We can keep the data type as integer and set it as primary key and non-null value. There are other column flags as well. For example, unique, binary, unsigned, zero field, auto increment and generated column. We'll not be using them for now. Let's go ahead and create another column. Let's call it name. We can change its data type by clicking on it and selecting any other data type. Let's set it to varchar which is variable character of length 25. Once we are done, we'll simply click on apply and it will show up the SQL script. We'll leave everything as default and click on apply again. As you can see, the SQL script is executed. Let's close the window and also close the information table window. Now if we expand the customer database, we can see that the information table is created. Let's expand the columns. As you can see, the ID and name columns are right there. Now let's right click the information table and click on select rows. As you can see, this table is completely empty. We can insert some data into it. So let's provide one as ID and Alex as name. In the second row, we can provide two as ID and Emily as name. Once we are done, we can simply click on apply. Let me expand the window so that we can see the SQL scripts. Click on apply to execute it and then click on close. The data should be stored in the database by now. Let's close the window and right click on information table again and click on select rows. As you can see, it successfully retrieved the data we just stored. Alright, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.